All right, so one of my comments the other day, I got asked, or during one of my live streams, I got asked, what is the most effective room size when you land? And is it worth just making bedrooms for every colonist instead of having one big shared room? And this is a really interesting question for me because it wasn't something that I really thought about. I've just gotten used to making rooms about five by five, walls five by five, so about there. And that is just the typical size for me. I like to have five by five because it allows me to expand quite a bit in the future. I have a bed there, usually a door here. Obviously, you need a, a door, let's be real here. <laughs> and then a few things later on in the game, if I have enough power, I can put lights and some flower pots and another like neat little things. But it made me wonder about what was the actual optimal size. And of course, you do get a resources versus utility kind of thing where you don't want a room to be too big because you don't want to waste resources on it, etc, etc. So what I've got here is a whole bunch of heaters connected to rooms of different sizes and then a sort of barracks of sort. Don't worry about the heaters. It doesn't affect the room at all. What you need to worry about is this middle section like that also. So the first room we have is 4x4. Four four. The second one is 5x5 five five, and the third one is 6x6. Six six. And I'm talking about the wall sizes there. And the barracks is 10 by 10. I also just want to say that I am using cream carpet. So as you can see, there's a positive 2 buff to everything. But as you can see, the beauty stays under 2 and usually above 1. So just keep that in mind when you see the results because the beauty might be linked to the carpet. So it's, it's pretty interesting. Usually what, what I used to do is I used to have one big barracks. But it actually is not the best idea, I found out. So we can take a look at the buffs you get now when they're done working. As you can see, every single colonist is exactly the same. So if we take a look here at their needs right now, you can see awful bedroom. I'm just waiting for the night to go a bit in so they get all the debuffs, the proper debuffs. Okay, so you have a cramped interior, and that's from being in the room. It's not about sleeping there or having this as a bedroom, it's about being in a cramped room. Um, the second one, Itamu 2, has the exact same debuff. The third one does not. So the 6x6 room is actually okay. It, it doesn't give you negative 5, which is nice. If a colonist is about to break, it's not a good idea to put them in a bedroom like this. So say if you have someone who just got shot, they're in a terrible mood, very close to breaking, make sure that your medicine room or just your hospital is at least 6x6, which is something I've never done. I just don't think about it. Hospitals are the same size as normal rooms. In the barracks, though, it's a different story. So first of all, you have the Disturbed Sleep debuff, which you will get in a barracks that has more than two people in it, because that is what happens if you walk near someone. But then you also have the Shed uh, Bedroom debuff. This lasts the whole... This lasts forever. If you're in a room with someone else, this lasts forever. Which is like negative five. That's incredibly irritating. It's incredibly irritating. But, but one of the things that gets rid of that is the fact that you have a spacious interior. This is 10 by 10, if you remember. So it gives you... I'd say it, it counterbalances it in a sense, but it actually doesn't because this shared bedroom thing lasts way into the future. Like, look, he's outside now. See? So it's pretty terrible. So, of course, in, in, um, in a world where you don't have a ton of resources in the beginning or you just don't want to make your bases too big, then I would say 4x4 four four is generally okay. Like, a room like this is okay. You might even have a like <clears throat> sorry a room like this and just just be everything that a colonist could ever dream of we can take a look at the debuff this gives you i'm not sure if it is much different to that one actually wait let me set this to itamu 2 this can be itamu 1 as you can see colonists will naturally switch out of here into those ones which is kind of interesting actually and as you can see, they're just busy mining blocks because I needed to get them to do something. Because I uh, kind of rest this. Yeah, I didn't want to take any chances when I was setting up the scenario because I didn't want the moods to be different or affected by anything else. So there's no greedy or anything, no acidic stuff like that. They're all equal, exactly the same in every single way. So it's pretty cool. What I think... What I think, it just depends entirely on your start. So if you are in a world where your resources are fine, you're in an easily defendable location, then go for 6x6 six six for sure. Like a 6x6 six six room. And that is massive. It's much bigger than I usually do. Like, look how big this room is. And then compare it to the bed that would go inside it. It's pretty freaking big. It's not something that you would do normally. 
But after seeing the debuff that I have, I actually th I'm starting to think that having the 6x6 room is actually pretty worth it. And as you can see, this is the only room where you don't have any negative debuffs. While this room is the only one where you have a positive buff. So I want to keep on testing. Uh, we can expand the test zone a little bit, make it 7x7. Seven 8x8. Seven. Eight eight. Of course, I am talking about the walls, so just keep that in mind when watching this video. I'm not talking about the interior, I'm talking about the walls. A lot of people get confused. Okay, and let's put beds down. Let's just let them do their thing and we can test again tomorrow. But now I do want to see this debuff here. Very cramped interior gives you negative 10. And that is the difference between having this 3x2. Wait, what is this? Three? Wait, 3x4, three I think. 3x4 and just having it 4x4. Four four, it adds an extra negative 5 debuff. So these are the worst rooms by far if you have a colonist who is close to breaking. So please just keep that in mind if you are the kind of person to do this. Because I, I definitely used to be. As you can see, the debuff is gone. These rooms must be finished. Let's see, what did you get? Decent bedroom. How, how nice are these rooms? Alright, they're all the same. Pr pretty much almost the same. Okay, almost the same. You can see the wealth is different, obviously. But that is because there's more wood in the walls around. Okay, so let's skip the night. So I'm using cream carpets in, in this testing video which gives you a positive two for every tile so just keep that in mind because when you are starting out you probably will have different ranging levels of beauty on the floor because you might not have a floor yet or you might be using wood etc etc if you smooth out the floor it actually is a lot more beautiful than using wood all right let's take a look at what this entails whoops Okay, so as you can see, there are no buffs for being in this bedroom. Like, the decent bedroom is two, but it's just because he likes the bedroom. And this one is just three. And then it goes to plus five, plus four over here. So this is plus nine in total for a room this big. Obviously, this is massive. I don't think anyone should ever give their colonists a nine by nine room. But I think that you could definitely do six by six or seven by seven. Because if we go back to the six by six, you can see that there are no buffs for this. But there are no there are no negative buffs either. At the, I mean, there are no T buffs either. So it's pretty nice. This is just plus two, which is it's not really it's not really worth having an extra extra one by one on it. But having no debuff compared to negative five is pretty hectic. That's a pretty big deal. So if you ask me what my final verdict would be, I would start to say that if you can. Make it 6x6. Six six. Don't worry about making it any bigger than that. But the negative debuff that you get over here is pretty hectic. So if if your world warrants it and allows it to happen, then go 6x6. Six six. If anything else, obviously make, make the rooms whatever you need them to be. So if you have to have rooms that are 3x4, that, that's what you have to do to let your colonists survive. Stuff like this just isn't worth it. Although this is a very big buff. Like 5 plus 4. <laughs> pretty hectic it is pretty hectic but obviously this kind of stuff impressive bedroom and all that can be gained in other ways so please just remember that like i could put down artwork inside the bedroom to make up for that so you don't you don't need a massive bedroom the wealth is just the walls so what what i would recommend is just making a room like six by six which is actually this one and adding in some artwork and some pot plants inside you just increase the beauty and the wealth that's pretty much it Anyways, thank you guys for joining me for this testing video. Uh, this is it, this is not meant to be a guide, and I know lots of people are going to say, uh, well, you know, you can just put on artwork and stuff like that. I, I definitely understand that. But yeah, it's just still interesting to me, because I always make my rooms about about 5x5, five five, I'd say. I like the look of 5x5. Five five. Gives me enough to expand later. I think I'll start doing 6x6 six six if I can. Anyways, hope you guys have an amazing day. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. Hey, you! Thank you very much for making it to the end of my video. You've actually proved yourself to be above the average. Above the average. Because the average watch time of my video is 63%. But that's okay, because 63% is exactly how much you need to get a message across. And funnily enough, you only need to watch about 60% of this message to get what I'm making it for. Anyways, I've decided to open up a Patreon. If you'd like to support me, besides in the amazing ways that all of my awesome subs already usually do, then you can head over to the link in the description to check it out. All your support is appreciated, monetarily or not. If you're a subscriber, then be sure to hit the little bell over here to always be up to date with videos I push out. 
and head over to the Discord if you ever want to have a deep and meaningful chat with me. And last but not least, I hope you're having an amazing day.